everyone! It's Amanda from I Sew A Lot and I'm here today with my very belated May Makes. Um, I'll get to how they're belated at the end of the video, but I've got quite a, th a few things to show you. This is just May. I'm going to upload a different video for Ju my June Makes, even though we are just coming to the end of June. But I've done a couple of pattern tests this month which haven't yet been released, so I'm hoping if I leave it a little bit longer they might be released so I can share those with you as well. So, first thing that I want to show you, and you have seen this pattern from me before, but uh, it's slightly different I think, but I'm going to show you anyway because I love it. So, first of all, this dress is really sentimental to me for one specific reason. It was sent to me, this fabric, by the lovely Sally of You, Me and Mabel. And if you've been following me for a while, or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll remember that in the winter, earlier this year, my husband, I bagged up all of my clothes, my summer clothes, to put them up in my loft. I told my husband that this is what I was doing, but stupidly left them in a black sack, um, two black sacks in fact, and my husband decided to take all my summer clothes to a charity bank to recycle them. It's the kind of bank where you put things in and once they're in there, that's it. You can't get them out. So I was on my way home from teaching a class and I phoned him and he said, oh, I took all those clothes um, to the charity bank that you didn't want anymore. And it was two bags full of my entire summer wardrobe. So anyway, when Sally heard about my um, issue, she sent me this really lovely Robert Kaufman chambray and as you can see it's got really tiny white polka dots all over it and I have made the Deer and Doe Blue A so I'll stand up and show you so it's a shirt dress obviously um, it's relatively short, comes just above my knee and on the back it doesn't have a yoke, it's all princess themed and yes, I use these pearl snaps from Prim, which I think go really, really well with denim. And it's got these lovely cap sleeves. You can make a sleeveless version, but and it's from Do and Do. I don't know if I said that, but anyway. So yes, I really love this shirt dress, and the pattern is a go-to shirt dress pattern for me. It fits me really well without any adjustments. I know that mine is quite snug, but that's the way I like it because otherwise I have fitting issues over the bust. It's still comfortable to wear. And I have just actually finished sewing another one, which I really love, which is my third one. So if you have those cottons in your stash that you don't know what to do with, I would strongly recommend that you have a look at the Deer and Doe Bluer to use them up because it really is a great pattern. So I've got to get changed and I'll be back in a minute. Super sorry if I'm really waffly today, but obviously as I haven't vlogged for a while, I've kind of forgotten how to do it, so please forgive me. Anyway, the next thing I made is another Deer and Doe pattern, and is the Deer and Doe Sirocco jumpsuit. And I made this for the Pin and Sew blog, so this fabric was kindly gifted to me by the lovely Aga of Pin and Sew. And if you want to hear all about it, I'll put the link down below to the blog post. It was inspired by the lovely Rachel of Stitched Up. She, hers was the first version that I saw actually sewn up. And immediately after I saw it, I wanted to sew one for myself. There are some um, things that you need to take into account when you sew this jumpsuit. First of all, you need to make sure that the jersey that you use, because obviously it's a jersey pattern, has a 60% stretch. I wouldn't advise going any lower than that because as you'll see when I stand up, otherwise you will not be able to get it on and off. So as you can see, um, hopefully you can see, although I appreciate it's quite a busy print, um, it's got a waistband here um, and it has a bodice and separate trousers with these lovely pockets. It's got two pleats here, pleats on the top as well. Um, and on the back, it's actually got darts here and two more pleats here. This fabric is amazing. I love it. I know it's a bit loud, but I really love it. And I'm actually going to put a picture in here because I did change the pattern and I can't show you the full length. But it's supposed to have a tapered leg right to the ankle. I decided tapered legs not really for me. I prefer a wide leg, as you probably know if you've been following me for a while. 
just because I have uh, my waist and my hip, uh, the ratio between the two are a little disproportionate. So if I'm to wear a tapered leg, I feel the same with skinny jeans as well. It actually accentuates the fact that my hips are quite a lot bigger than my waist. So I prefer a wider leg because I feel like that elongates you and also doesn't make um, that so prevalent. So yes, anyway, so I widened the leg just carrying the line straight down instead of tapering them. And I also cropped it because I thought I would probably wear that more. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. It's super comfortable, like secret pyjamas, so I would recommend it. But definitely make sure you sew it with a jersey that has the correct stretch percentage. So anyway, like I say, I'll leave the link to it down below so you can go and check it out. So I'm going to get it changed. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the next thing I made is from this really lovely jersey from Material Girl Laura. It's a lovely, I want to say mustard, but it's in between, it's sort of a buttery yellow. And it's obviously got these white polka dots, I've got a thing for polka dots this month. And I made the AK Patterns Susie dress. Again, this is something you've seen from me before. But I love it, it's my go-to jersey dress. It's obviously got a t-shirt style top. Uh, it's got an elasticated waist, so you've got an elastic, a piece of elastic that runs all the way around. Then it has this belt, and what it also has that I love is this faux wrap. So I'm hoping that you can see the bottom, but it has this really interesting um, sort of, what would you call that, vent I guess. And that makes it really easy to wear and really easy to walk in. So I really like this. It's definitely a go-to jersey dress. This jersey is so soft. The only thing I would say is it is uh, more of a t-shirt top weight rather than a bottom weight. So it is slightly see-through if you're gonna wear it on your bottom. So you have to choose your underwear accordingly. So I also, as I love this pattern so much, made uh, another version from this beautiful Pontaroma from Satisfaction. I don't think they have the pink colourway in stock anymore, but I will check. But they do have it in a navy. And this is obviously heavier weight than the one I'm wearing. And it worked really, really well. And it was quite popular when I posted it on Instagram. But yes, I'll try and insert a picture so you can see. Although the picture I have is really ba bad quality because it was the gloomiest day ever. But yes, the Susie dress from AK Patterns, named after the lovely Susie of Sewing in Spain. Uh, one of my go-to jersey dress patterns. Perfect for the summer. Yeah, and using up, it doesn't take that much fabric either. I think it only takes about a metre and a half of jersey. I obviously make a relatively small size, but it is quite economic with the amount of fabric that you need. So, I'm going to get changed again. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so a really summery make that I've also sewn up this uh, in May is the, I think you say it, Marcel dress by Nina Lee. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple dress with a flounce, very summery. And I use this beautiful viscose crepe from So 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 UK, the lovely Katie. And she's got some really lovely viscose crepes on her website at the moment. There's a red one that I quite like the look of. Um, but yes, perfect for this dress. And what I did was I used the tutorial that Nina's actually got on her website to create a maxi. So I'll try and put in an image that I have of the full length so that you can see. Um, but there's a tutorial on there that shows you how to add. So you've actually I've actually added a channel here with some elastic to cinch it in slightly. The only, I haven't, full disclosure, I haven't actually hemmed it yet because I can't decide whether I didn't make it quite wide enough at the bottom, obviously as it's maxi, and I need to potentially put a split in the side. I haven't decided. I really like the fact with this dress, oh, there's my bra, that it actually has, I'm just gonna show it, um, bias binding all around the underarms so that's really nice if you wanted to as well which i probably will you can wear it on your shoulders which i quite like 
I like it either way. But yeah, really simple, straightforward pattern. The tutorial is really clear. You obviously have to buy the pattern to enable you to make the maxi dress or either of the dresses. Um, and yeah, I'll definitely make it again. I might make a shorter version because um, I'm going on holiday at the end of July. So I might make a shorter version. And I've got some really lovely Birds of Paradise this goes from satisfaction which is crying out to be a Marseille dress so I'm gonna get changed again I think I need to get changed twice more maybe so I'll be back in a minute okay so another thing that I made to replace uh, the clothes that were in the bags that got thrown away was some more butterick clots I made three pairs of these um, and I lived in them in the summer last year so I was really missing them once the weather started to warm up so I made another pair so I'll show you, I don't know if I'll be able to, I won't be able to show you the length so I might have to put a picture in but they're really simple, really straightforward, they've just got darts on the front and darts on the back uh, I think the zip's supposed to go at the back but I've moved it to the side and yes I made them from, I think this might be a John Caldor and it's a stretch crepe, I think it's called the Dynasty Crepe from So Essential and I used this before to make a black pair. I also used it to make um, the Adrienne skirt for my that, that crepe, but it was in a black colourway. It's a really great crepe. It washes really well, it presses really well. You don't have to iron it when you get it out of the wash. It dries really quickly, but it's really nice and comfortable to wear because obviously it's got a little bit of stretch in it. So yes. I would like another couple of pairs of these because I just think they're perfect for the warmer months. But yeah, so really happy with those. So I'm going to get changed for the last time. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it seems like absolutely ages ago that I made this item because I think I actually sewed it in April but it didn't go live on the blog till May so I couldn't show you last time. But anyway, it is the Tilly and the Buttons Eden coat. And I made this for the Satisfaction blog using this lovely yellow fleece back soft shell. It's quite a bulky fabric and you can read all about how I found the pattern and how I found the fabric over on the blog post. And I will put a link down below so that you can see. Um, I used a quilted lining inside. This was from my stash. I can't remember where I got it from now. But uh, yeah, let me put the hood up so I can show you. So I made the, um, it also comes in a duffel coat version, but I made the jacket. I didn't add pockets, it has patch pockets. And as you can see, it's actually quite short on me. So if I had put pockets in, they would have been uncomfortable. Um, so if I was to make it again, I would definitely add a bit of length, probably at least four inches. I, because I wasn't adding the pockets, I wanted to add a bit of interest. So I've put these storm flaps on the front and there's also a big one on the back but because this fabric is quite um, a medium weight fabric I would say medium to heavy weight fabric the storm flaps on the front as you can see at the back they sort of stood away from the jacket quite a bit the back one's not so bad because it's big um, so I had to top stitch these down as you can see I haven't top stitched them all the way um, but I top stitched the front element only. Um, I used prim anorak snaps, and these are my favourite snaps. They come in loads of different colours, and um, I use them on everything. <laughs> so they're really, really good quality. They're really tough. It's also got inside, it's got a zip, which is optional. This is an open ended zip, obviously, and then it's got the poppers on the front. Whoops, that you can. Uh, so you've got double warmth going on there and the poppers actually do up around the hood as well although that's a bit snug for me but yeah um, it turned out really really well I was really happy with it Tilly actually shared it on her feed which was very flattering and yeah it was a relatively easy sew but like I say the fabric is quite heavyweight and coupled with the quilted lining that was the mistake that I made um, using two fabrics that were of quite bulky weight um, and then it made it slightly harder to get everything to lay nice and flat obviously pressing because it's a soft shell pressing can be tricky it does press but you've got to be quite careful with it because you don't want to mark it but ultimately I think it's turned out really well it's really warm 
Um, so I'm kind of, because it did turn out more like a winter jacket, so I'm quite looking forward to the weather, when the weather gets cooler, being able to wear it. But yes, really, really pleased with that. So, on to the bit that I had to leave till the end. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I have been having a rubbish, rubbish time. Um, I mentioned in my last video that my mum had had a fall at home and she had to have a hip replacement. But ultimately, um, she has a pre-existing condition called, I have to remember how to say it now, spinocerebellar um, ataxia. And it's a degenerative disease of the brain. And it means that it affects that part of your brain which not only controls your mobility but also controls um, how you use your sort of pressure to do things. For example, if you go to grab a glass of water, your brain knows how fast, how far and how much effort you need to put in. Well, ataxia affects all of that. So your coordination in total is just completely short. Um, it also affects speech and it can affect sight and it can also affect um, your swallowing. Um, but it is a debilitating disease and like I said before in my previous video sadly my mum suffered with this so uh, returning from a hip replacement surgery for an ordinary person would not really be too tricksy obviously you would be in a lot of pain to begin with your mobility would be limited but in a matter of weeks you would be starting to feel more like yourself well my mum was actually in hospital for three weeks and then she went to a rehabilitation type hospital um geriatric based for another three weeks and so it was coming up for about seven weeks when she finally managed to come home and then she came home and she had to have th care three times a day to um look after her and she's only 70 years of age and uh five years ago before she was diagnosed she was running around everywhere she gave up work to help me look after my children she had two jobs and yeah she was really active and healthy so um, yeah she went home she'd been at home probably for about nearly two weeks and she was getting on really well she was really positive and um, yeah she was telling me that she was gonna get back to how she was before she fell over and she was really looking forward to getting some of her mobility back but sadly we didn't realize she'd actually got dvt which had caused her to have lots of clots in her lungs which we didn't know she was out of breath but generally she was out of breath anyway because of the ataxia and sadly she collapsed at home and uh, then had to be rushed to intensive care um, she was in intensive care for about four days, but sadly, because she um, was so unwell, they couldn't help her, so we had to turn the machines off, which was horrible. And so now she's gone. So that's the reason why I haven't vlogged and why I haven't had a lot of posts on Instagram. Uh, but one thing I did do was... <laughs> I made her this cardigan. I have made um, the Como cardigan it is by Style Art Patterns previously and my mum saw it and she said she really really liked it and so I offered to make her one and shortly after she went into hospital um, the fabric arrived and from the lovely Aggo, it's a lovely French terry and she chose the bottle green and so I decided that I would make it for her and I'm going to give it to her so that she can wear it. So I had to film this vlog today even though as you can tell it's quite a hard vlog for me to film because I've got to go and give it to her so I had to film it today. But yes I will stand up and show you. I think she would have loved it. Um, it's like a blanket, <laughs> but hopefully it's going to keep her warm. So I'm really sorry that that is sad. I'm sorry. 
Um, I hope it didn't upset anybody. And if there is anybody out there who's suffering with ataxia, because it's such a rare condition, I think there's only about 10,000 people in the UK that suffer with it. And also, um, it can be hereditary. So that's also another issue that me and my family are having to deal with. So um, if there is anybody out there, get in touch with Ataxia UK. Um, I know you're probably not getting the support that you need because generally that's the way because it's so rare people don't really know how to cope with it. I know with my mum, she was constantly telling people, explaining to people what it was and what it meant and they just couldn't understand why she was struggling so much. If you say MS, people understand. If you say Parkinson's, people understand. But if you say ataxia, people don't understand. So, um, yeah, it's hard. And I just hope that you are getting the help and the support that you need. Uh, I'm just going to also say, because of it, I have started up, well, my sister started up a Just Giving page. It would mean the absolute world to us if you, anybody watching, could donate anything to get more awareness about this disease, which is just so destructive. So um, I'm going to put the link to our Just Giving page and just so that people don't have to suffer like she did. So anyway, rubbish, it's so rubbish, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna, yes, June's vlog is gonna be upbeat, I promise, I'm not gonna talk about anything that's sad, so anyway, thanks for watching, and I will be back soon, um, <laughs> I'll see you soon, bye.